wide open. Hey, what's up? Nick here. Welcome to the second video of the Wide Open Wi-Fi Tour, where we're going to dive in to help you get the best internet you can possibly get on the road. And today we're going to be talking about boosters, MIMO, carrier aggregation, and wires. Are boosters old news? Are they even helping? And if so, what are they helping with? Uh, what is MIMO? Can boosters do MIMO? What is carrier aggregation? And can boosters do that? I also wanted to talk about antenna wires because on the tour I've seen a lot of people with the these huge wires running into their camper and so I wanted to talk about them what they do to the quality of the signal and how boosters work with that okay so essentially to start it off how do boosters work and are they even relevant anymore okay so essentially with a booster what they do is grab a signal on the roof and move it to where you are and I say moving it because uh, they don't hardly boost a signal so let me just draw a little camper right here this is the mast that a lot of people have and uh, they put their booster antenna up there they run the wire and a lot of times like i said they run a huge wire somewhere like into their slide or something and then they have a device in here that has another little patch antenna and what they do is they get the signal from up here and they bring it down and bring it to this box and they essentially boost it in here but like it says over here they're limited in how much boost they can provide they're limited by the fcc and they're limited just in the design of the equipment themselves so if you look at this device right here if it was to put out a signal big enough what that would actually happen is this signal would get picked up by the antenna on the top and it would create what's called the feedback loop and when i bought a booster system this was happening to me all the time there wasn't hardly anything i could do to actually get it to work and believe me i'm one of those guys that will go out and try and try and try and try and try to make it work so what i ended up doing let me just draw my camper here i would put the booster like right in somewhat in the middle and i took a mast and i put it on the very front and i pointed it away from where i had the internal antenna pointed to this one was pointing this way and if i was over here I wouldn't get a signal at all so I'd turn it up and what would happen is that it essentially would feedback and then it would shut itself down. So they are limited by the FCC but they are limited just essentially in design. If you boost it too much it, it just keeps going back and back and back and then eventually shuts itself down. Um, they can boost the signal but they cannot improve the quality. So what do I mean by this? Okay so if you take a look at this drawing up here the quality of the signal that they are getting from this point right here is the best it could possibly be okay so they can't take a signal and bring it down into a box and have that box magically make the signal better all it can do is essentially boost the signal now what happens is that when you bring a signal in it travels over the wire and we're going to talk about wires a little bit later but when it gets to the box it's actually a fraction of what it was up on the roof so when it boosts it all it really can do is boost it to get it close to where it was on the roof but what really ends up happening is they boost it and they lose quite a bit of quality of the signal so the speeds that you're getting inside aren't as good as they could be if you were to actually take your phone and put your phone up where you have the antenna at the top and i say it's actually equal to but maybe a step down from this but really it's a big step down from putting your phone up there because your phone can actually do mimo it can do carrier aggregation it can do so much more we're going to talk about that in a little bit but by taking your phone and putting it up there your phone will get a better signal than the booster could ever do on the tour i was super surprised to see how many people we're still using these boosters, but I wasn't surprised to see that those who were using it got significantly slower speeds than what we were getting in the same area with the same provider as well. All right, so I mentioned MIMO. Essentially, MIMO is multiple in, multiple out, and this 
is where the speed is. So we're gonna talk about two by two Mimo. It essentially uses two antennas to create two paths to the tower. And some people will say that it essentially doubles your speed, but I don't know if that's quite accurate. I'd like to think of it like this. It, it That two paths enhances the quality of the signal that you have. I like to say uh, like one eye versus two eyes, right? So if you were to go outside and you recover one eye and you were to look around, you could still see stuff, but you know, it's a little blurry. Um, you lose a little bit of 3D, you know, depth perception and stuff like that. But then when you open your eyes, it's like everything becomes really clear and, and you have a really clear picture of what's going on. That's what I like to think of MIMO is for the quality of the signal. And I mean, it's very similar one ear versus two ears. You just get a better quality of signal going. And then of course, it's able to do those two paths to the tower and the tower is able to see you and work with you uh, much better. Uh, and it also assists with setting up carrier aggregation. We're gonna talk about that in a second. But the problem here is that boosters cannot do MIMO because boosters have only one path. So if you remember my picture and we have the antenna up here, this is the one path that they have and they bring that path into the camper and your phone is locking onto that path through the booster system. So there's no way that your phone is going to see or going to be able to communicate over MIMO using a booster. And that's really a big strike for boosters because MIMO along with carrier aggregation is where you get the ultra speed. It locks onto multiple LTE bands to get the best speed. Now, if you haven't seen my video about how to get the best speeds from the towers, check out the video right there where I explain all the bands in detail on LTE, why you get some certain bands and why they might be congested and how you can get the better bands and get higher speeds. It's actually controlled by the tower, but the tower wants to give you a good speed. It's not trying to give you the least possible speed. It's trying to do its job. And uh, the tower will give you carrier aggregation when it has a better signal with you. That's why I like to use the analogy of the eyes because if the tower can see you really well, it can communicate with you and say, what bands can you take? Here, can you take these? And it'll give you a bunch of bands and it'll start doing that carrier aggregation for you. And as soon as you start using data, it's going to start adding bands and allowing you to get a much bigger data pipe versus not having carrier aggregation. Now, certain modems can do it and others cannot. Now, I'm talking specifically about the uh, like the routers that are out in the industry right now. There are some that are selling that don't really tell you what category is of the modem. Personally, I would steer clear of those. If they don't list what category modem they're using, um, they could be using an older category four type modem. And, and here the category fours don't do carrier aggregation at all. Category six is what I had inside uh, the Mophie device. It could do two times carrier aggregation. And category 12 is what we're building into our InstiConnect can do three times carrier aggregation. And then there's modems that can do four and we start getting into 5G stuff as well. The ones that we're gonna be testing with 5G can do four times carrier aggregation and we're gonna have a quad angel wings and everything. Those will be super cool. But in this video, we're just gonna talk about the category 12, all right? So now the question is, can boosters do carrier aggregation? And you might be thinking, well, no, Nick, you told me that boosters can't do MIMO, so can they do carrier aggregation? Well, here's the thing. You don't need MIMO to do carrier aggregation. I've actually been able to do it on just one antenna. The problem is it wasn't very consistent and it didn't deliver the speeds that MIMO can do. So in all my research on boosters, I was not able to find technical specifications on whether the boosters could do carrier aggregation or not. What I did find is that boosters would have their antenna and they would have multiple little LED indicators on the booster device and they would list off the frequency that they're essentially boosting. So I guess it could be possible if the booster was boosting all of those frequencies and sending it to you inside your rig, your phone might be able to look at those and then try to do some carrier aggregation with it. But the main problem is, is that when you don't have MIMO and if you're talking to the tower through a booster, the booster might not see you with the quality that it wants to see and it might not turn on the carrier aggregation for you. So I'm guessing that most of the times when you're using a booster, it just can't negotiate with the tower in a way that it would actually turn carrier aggregation on for you. And we'll touch on this a little bit more, but now I wanted to talk about wires because the wires have a lot to do with the quality of the signal that is being sent over to the tower, okay? So essentially, the longer the wire, the more loss you have, the lower speeds. That's why all the people that we met on the tour who were using a booster would come and say, I just don't understand why my speeds are so slow 
and then I would look and they'd have like a 30 foot cable that ran to their uh, antenna to pull it down and then it'd pull it into the booster and things like that. That 30 foot cable essentially decimated their signal coming in. The booster did the best that it could to essentially boost it back up to kind of cover the loss of the wire. But you can probably guess when you lose so much and you boost it back up, the quality of the signal just significantly drops. So all this was in my mind when I was thinking about how we were gonna create our very own device. This is why we're doing it this way. We created it specifically like this to minimize the signal loss because we wanted to be able to get the best quality and the best signal so we can get the best speed. So essentially what we do is we take it and we put the modem right where the best quality signal is, right up on the top of the camper, and we immediately turn it into data. And by turning it into data, we can send it over a wire and have a fraction of the loss versus sending a signal over the wire. Now I want you to picture it like being on top of your rig. If you've ever climbed up there and you've, like when we climbed up there when we were in Arizona, we took a look around and it's like, wow, look at the view out here. This is just amazing. That's what our modem sees because it's up there and its own eyes are looking out on the horizon, picking up any signal that's out there. And the amount of wires that we have are on here are super, super small. So there's literally no loss between the modem and the antenna so you can bring it in and start turning it into data right away. Now what happens if that signal is super far away? Because we created the system to be modular, we thought it would be neat to put on a pair of binoculars and then send it up even higher to get a better view. It's like climbing up on a tower, grabbing your pair of binoculars and looking out and you can see way, way off into the distance. So this is the first time I'm showing you this. This is essentially our long distance application. These are LDPA antennas and I'll tell you all about antennas in a different video but if you look at this what we do is we take the modem out of the angel wings and we slide it right in here and then these wires hook right up to it just like this and then you plug in the data cable and the data cable goes down to your router and you send this thing high up as high up as 30 feet and you actually point this in the right direction of the towers and it can pick up a signal from really really far away that's the beauty of having a modular internet device or if you get to those fringe zones and you need your binoculars you just pull them out set them up and you get some really really good speed so we went to a place called ghost town and it was in arizona and we got there and with the antenna with the angel antennas i was able to get two to three out in this fringe zone and i picked this fringe zone because people on campendium said that the signal there was iffy at best so i said we're gonna go out there and we're gonna try it out angel wings got about two to three but when we hooked up the binoculars and put them on there we were getting 20 Meg's download, so it was a significant increase. It took me a few minutes to turn it around to find the best signal, but once we were able to do that, we had a rock solid signal. But the beauty of the way we're doing it is that when it's way up here and we're passing the information down on a cable, it's going through a data cable, and it sees virtually no loss, especially these custom cables that we're building uh, that could go up to 50 feet. So we're super, super excited for how we're doing this, and it's just all these little pieces that I'm talking about, like how to get the fastest speeds from the tower in that other video and how carrier aggregation MIMO and all of that stuff work together just these little pieces when we can design something that works really really well with all these pieces we end up with a system that's going to be pretty pretty awesome and I'm really really excited about it all right that being said let's wrap it up I really don't want to you know be a downer on anybody's product but all I really want to do is help you get the best speeds that you possibly can when you're out on the road that being said boosters are just not it anymore. They were designed at a time where they had a very specific purpose, I believe. And if you remember my other video where I talked about how towers evolved and I talked about band 13 and then we had uh, two and four and so on the higher frequency bands, the boosters were actually designed for a time right about here when we had 3G and then we're just starting to get into 4G and LTE and everything. The towers were actually pretty far away and what people struggled with was being able to get a signal from a tower at all and so what they would do is they would get a booster and because the booster had the long line that long antenna wire available to it they were able to put the antenna way up at the top and it would work because the booster itself would compensate for the long line and they were able to send it way up just like we can with our binoculars but essentially when the when it would come into the booster the booster would try to boost it to get it essentially back to where it was here but it would get it close enough and it would work okay and that was back 
in this time. Now we've really evolved and if and just by driving around you can see there are virtually cell towers everywhere. So the situation isn't that we can't get a signal, it's that we need to get the right signal. And that's what that previous video was all about. And if you haven't seen that one, I'd encourage you to check it out because it has a lot of good information about 4G. Be sure to check that one out, okay? And to be honest, in all of my thousands and thousands of miles of travel over the last five years, I've only been in a handful of places where internet was not available at all. And in each one of those places a signal booster would not have been able to get an internet signal either so most notably when we were in Custer State Park there was absolutely no signal there was no way a booster could get a signal down there I had to walk all the way up the mountain and beam it down myself and even if I was to try to go up to the top of the mountain set up a booster down there and beam it down it wouldn't have worked anyway because it, it just can't boost a signal high enough to to get it down the mountain so long story short I haven't ever been in a spot where a booster would have given me better speeds, better signal, than having the antenna up in that spot by itself. And that's what I've always done, and that's why I've created a system like Insti Connect. And if you're someone that is looking to replace your booster, maybe this is kind of ring true for you, and you're thinking, dude, I, I finally know why this thing doesn't work quite well. Um, head over to InstiConnect.com, check out what we're doing there. There's a place where you can put your name and email address where you can sign up to essentially be first on the list when we get these things out. And in the next video, I'm gonna talk about about why I don't recommend the Mophie anymore. Now I said up here I don't want to put any product down but I recommended the Mophie. You might have seen me the very first time because it has about a quarter million views. Back a few years ago I was struggling with one of those little jetpack things and I could not figure out why somebody didn't have a more enterprise uh, solution. So I found the Mophie. I shot a video and a lot of people saw it and I ex essentially explained how you could bypass congestion and everything and I didn't even really know it. I just said this is how you do it the best. Some people did it and um, and by that though I was able to figure out what so many people struggled with. I won't go into all of it because that's what the video is going to be about but, uh, but essentially there's a big reason why uh, I even started looking into what I could recommend again. I didn't find anything that completely checked all the boxes and I thought to myself it'd be really sweet if we had a system that was modular and it could do something more like this. That's where the whole idea for this whole thing came from. I was looking to replace the Mophie and I couldn't find the perfect thing. Anyway, so we'll be talking about that more. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're brand new here, be sure to subscribe. If you're looking for a new internet device, head over to insticonnect.com. Check out what we're doing. You'll see some behind the scenes stuff from the wide open Wi-Fi tour. Um, I'll send you an email right away. If you have any specific questions that you want to get my input on, just hit reply to that email to come right back to me and I'll check it out and I'll do my best to answer it for you. So thanks so much. Hope you're having a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. And I think we're planning on doing another wide open Wi-Fi tour. Let's go. Off to Jerome we go.